Orthopedics in puppies how to prevent crooked legs. The first six months are key because they determine the rest of the dog's life. We have to give him excellent nutrition and the vaccines that correspond to him. Immunity is generated in the first six months of life through vaccines and deworming. Good nutrition helps develop immunity, the skeletal system, the muscular system, and various organs and tissues. The three most important signs that we have to name are the deviation in the axes of the limbs, deformation in the joints and lameness. This problem occurs in rapidly growing puppies, large and giant breed puppies such as the Great Dane, the German Shepherd Dog, and the Neapolitan Mastiff. This happens because a puppy, at a certain moment, weighs 4 kilograms and in a few months already weighs more than 40 kilos. The same with height. A puppy can be 10 centimeters tall and then exceed 45 centimeters in a very short time. This growth is very important at the body level and at the level of the viscera. It is also very important for the immune system to develop and of course the muscles and skeletal system. Developmental orthopedic disease mainly affects the long bones of the limbs. The most affected are the forelimbs and mainly the shoulder and elbow joints. The humerus is involved in both the shoulder and the elbow, so let's talk a bit about the humerus. Long bones have one body, or shaft, and two ends, or epiphysis. These long bones grow during development thanks to the growth plates. These bones participate in joints that are very mobile, such as the shoulder and elbow. So they are joints with wide mobility, called synovial joints. They are a type of joints that allow wide mobility and are characterized by having joint capsules and synovial fluid in the center. The bones are surrounded by a joint capsule and ligaments, forming a synovial type joint. The first problem that can occur is the following. The cartilage does not nourish itself, but the nutrition comes to them through the synovial fluid with which they come into contact. The problem is when the articular cartilage increases its thickness in an exaggerated way, and then the layer of cartilage that is at the base does not reach the nutrients. And since the nutrients do not reach them, they die, become necrotic and then a fissure occurs. Then that piece of cartilage comes off. But it is not the same that a piece of cartilage detaches in the center of the articular cartilage, that in the periphery of the cartilage. If it is detached in the center, that piece of cartilage remains circling within the joint fluid, generating pain, and then he has to go to surgery. Whereas if it is detached from a peripheral area, this piece of cartilage joins and attaches itself to the joint capsule or ligaments. So it does not move, it does not cause pain and it does not go to surgery. A very important difference. During growth there needs to be good ossification. This ossification depends on several factors, genetics, body condition and nutrition. With regard to genetics, we have to mention that there is an inheritable factor. If a puppy has crooked elbows, for example, it is a growth problem that the parents may have also had. With regard to body condition, we have to say that it occurs thanks to a relationship between what you eat and the level of activity. Puppies are generally very active. With regard to what he eats, we have to avoid energy overload, that is, not give him more than what the puppy requires or needs. You have to give him exactly what he needs. If the activity level is high and what you eat is low, there is going to be a problem due to lack of nutrients. On the contrary, if you eat a lot and the activity level is low, then you will be obese. So the level of activity has to be related to the amount of what you eat. With regard to nutrition, we have to bear in mind that there is a false belief that puppies of large or giant breeds should simply be given calcium. This is false because the important thing is that there is a good relationship between calcium and phosphorus, a good ratio that must always be maintained. If you give it only calcium, the phosphorus will be low and then there will be problems. The same with the rest of vitamins and minerals, everything has to be balanced. There does not have to be more or less than a particular vitamin or mineral. Well, going back to bone development, we have to remember that in the forelimb, the humerus, the radius and the urn, they are long bones and grow long in the puppy thanks to the growth plate. The plates are between the body and the ends, 
there are two growth plates per bone. What these growth plates do is calcify the cartilage and then ossify it. Then there is cartilage, they calcify it and ossify it. Cartilage appears, it calcifies and ossifies it, and thus it grows in length thanks to the growth plates. This is called endochondral ossification. When there is a problem in endochondral ossification, then there is an orthopedic disease. On this particular topic, we are going to focus on the ulna. Remember that we have two growth plates, but the distal growth plate is the one that contributes 80% of the ulna growth, it is the most active. A problem in the ulna will also affect the radius. The distal growth plate of the ulna is very evident on the radiograph, where we can see it as a candle flame image. As the base of the candle is much wider, the problem is greater. Regarding the diagnosis, we have to take into account that in the image we see a puppy, which needs good nutrition for its growth. We also see how the joints are not aligned, the members are not aligned and take a direction that is not correct. Here it is very easy to say that it is a developmental orthopedic disease, but this is not always the case. Many times the changes are subtle and it is always best to detect them early, so that the treatment has better results. The first thing to do is make the puppy walk, and see if any of its legs give way, if any of its four legs are bothersome. The first thing we have to do is see, see how he walks. Then we have to touch the symmetry between the joints. We have to compare, for example, the left shoulder with the right shoulder. Then we have to flex and extend the different joints, always starting from distal to proximal. We start with the phalanges, then we continue with the carpus, elbow, shoulder, we have to do flexion and extension movements. Do the same with the hind limb. Once we detect which is the limb and which joint is the one that bothers the puppy, then we move on to x-ray. In the x-ray we always have to take two images, one from the front and one from the side. If my puppy is not growing correctly and I see something strange, for example a little paw bothers him, a joint hurts, or he limps, it does not necessarily have to be a developmental orthopedic disease. It can also be hypothyroidism, it can be a deficiency in growth hormone, it can also be trauma. A trauma at the level of the distal growth plate of the ulna will close that growth plate and the ulna will no longer grow, then it will cause a problem in the radius. A trauma can also lead to a lameness problem, the difference is that a trauma is very common to be only in one limb, while a developmental orthopedic disease is most likely to be in both limbs. Well, to finish we are going with some recommendations. If you have a large or giant breed puppy that needs good nutrition, then you have to know how much he will weigh as an adult and how tall he will be. There are balanced foods prepared with the number of grams per day that each puppy has to eat, according to the age and weight of your puppy. I recommend balanced foods such as Royal Canin, Proplan and Eucanuba, which really work very well. After six months of age, you can start switching to another food. But in the first six months, even the first year of life, give it this food that will determine, as I said at the beginning, the rest of your pet's life. Another important point is to know the genetic cause, you have to know if the parents or grandparents had a problem with the developmental orthopedic disease. If the parents or grandparents had it, your puppy most likely has it too. So you have to be attentive with this issue. With regard to nutrition, as we said you have to give it an excellent food and not add calcium or other things on your own. That they are not bad, but they are not good either. An important recommendation is that you have to follow the instructions of your veterinarian, who will control the poise. Legs are the axes of the limbs. If everything is fine, he does not need anything, if he thinks he thinks he needs it he will tell you, but always under veterinary supervision.